Hello and welcome. In this situation picture, we are going to talk about the dramatic situation in Bakhmut. Bakhmut seems to be about to fall to the Russians. And there was a big strike on Ukraine with air-launched cruise missiles, ballistic missiles and others. Among those were Kinshal that were used against Kiev. And while Ukraine claims all of them were shot down, the Russians claim they destroyed a Patriot battery. We're going to look into this and put it into some perspective. Let's start with the um, air defense with the Kinshal. We see here are um, starts by an air defense system. Regarding the angle, it was likely that a, a Patriot system was used here. And you see the huge volume of missiles that is being started. It's just going to increase further. The um, Ukrainians said they shot down all six Kinshal and Kaliber were also shot at them and also ballistic missiles. They all shot them down. You see the huge amount that is going in quick succession, which would be an indication of high value targeted targets being um, uh, engaged as the window of opportunity to shoot them down is fairly small. So it's usual practice to shoot more than one missile on a target. So if the first one misses, you can de still destroy it with the second one. And what we've seen here is a huge amount, a huge volume of them in total. It should be 30 missiles that have been used. Basically, the whole battery has emptied its tubes of the trans transporter erector launchers. You can also see where the missiles start and you see different points so so um, of the start. So we see def different TELs engaging into the fighting here. And while the starts continue, we can talk about the Kinshal. The Kinshal is being branded as a hypersonic missile, but it's um, a hypersonic uh, attack uh, missile, whatever you want to call it. The issue is while it's actually likely, why it has hypersonic speed, which is usually higher than Mach 5. It doesn't really qualify, at least in the opinion of most experts, it doesn't qualify as a real hypersonic weapon. Why is that? Because hypersonic isn't difficult. The German V2 missile, ballistic missile from World War II, was already reaching Mach 5. But what makes a hypersonic weapon is that you reach Mach 5 and higher and stay highly maneuverable. And the Kinshal, in fact, is just an Iskander that is being put under a a MiG-31. Um, you see here in a moment the strike that then hit the, something close to the target site or the target site. See, it's basically exactly there. Obviously, we don't know if it was launchers that were hit or if it was before or after them, but at least it seems like the, the air defense battery that shot there was hit at the same time. So the Kinshal is basically an Iskander short-range ballistic missile that is being hung under a MiG-31, which is one of the fastest planes in the world with Mach 2.8, at least without external load. It can fly extremely high and that adds much more flexibility to the Iskander and should give them probably a little boost in speed. The Iskander is being considered by the US to be roughly Mark 6 fast. So if we're generous, we can say that the uh, Kinshal is probably Mark 7. That qualifies it as a hypersonic speed. But the, the high maneuverability is absolutely unproven. And the Iskander just does, does minor course corrections, minor um, uh, attempts to evade interception, which is not what is needed for a hypersonic weapon. So the Kinshal is likely just an air launch ballistic missile and the Patriot Pack 3 is made to intercept ballistic missiles so that there should be some success, and that's the stream technician, that there should be some success in taking it down shouldn't be much of a surprise. So while the hit has been recorded there, we still don't know if it actually hit the battery. The Russians were claiming uh, that they destroyed a Patriot battery. What is highly likely or what is fairly likely is that a part of the battery was hit. Unless the Ukrainians are completely incompetent and stacked the whole battery at, the, at an area the size of a basketball court or maybe two basketball courts right next to each other, then it's spaced out enough the distances between the individual parts of the battery are big enough that one of the parts might have been hit and destroyed now, but the rest should be more or less fine. Right now, I've heard that claims from Ukraine that one one launcher was damaged, wasn't even destroyed, according to them. But I obviously have no claim, no way of, of proving this as of now, because even the picture of a damaged one would not prove anything. It could still mean a second one is completely destroyed. So um, to, this was to put this here in perspective. And now let's come to Bakhmut. 
Bakhmut, the Ukrainians are trying to advance on the north and on the so southern side. While there are some claims that Klishchivka is already recaptured or is almost reached, there is no proof whatsoever. The Ukrainians themselves, Cherry Barty, the speaker, talked about 600 meters advances. That's far from what is needed to reach Klishchivka. The deputy defense minister just spoke of in total 20 square kilometers being liberated. Lastly, it was 17. So while the Ukrainians likely gain additional territory, it's nowhere close to um, starting a turning maneuver to pushing the, the Wagner forces out of Bakhmut or to even envelop them and create an encirclement. In Bakhmut itself, Wagner is advancing. And we can see here, this is the so-called citadel, an area of high-rise buildings that are of more sturdy built and allow um, a view over the surrounding area and thus is an ideal defensive position. The Russians have now deeply penetrated it and there again they used new tactics from uh, which uh, supposedly surprised the Ukrainians. This whole area, as I read, has a um, heating system, where uh, a central heating system where hot water is being transfer transferred among the buildings. And the according to the reports, the Russians were using those pipes to get from one basement to the next basement and thus surprising the Ukrainians by popping up inside of the buildings they were defending instead of just being polite and coming through the windows and doors. Before that, they also surprised the Ukrainians by going with these buildings here. For instance, they only have windows and doors on one on, on the long sides, not on the head and toe sides of the buildings. And they were just breaking into the buildings by, by breaking through the walls there. And thus, again, avoiding going into the killing zones that were pre-designated by the Ukrainians. This could be an indication of the lack of quality by the Ukrainian forces because generally the urban combat training should include preparation for things like this because it's a three-dimensional battle unlay unlike um, a battle out in the countryside it is not just on the ground and on the air but it's also underground as basements tunnels etc are a reality and very common so supposed supposedly the the russians surprised the ukrainians massively and penetrated deep into the center of the citadel there are rumors now that they might have reached the end of the citadel this would be an utter disaster if it was true i cannot confirm that it's true as of now but obviously as you can imagine should the Russians control those those buildings here they would have an opportunity to surveil the whole open area here which would have to be used by the Ukrainians to withdraw at least from the eastern part of the citadel or to avoid being being cut off and that would uh, force them to go out into the open being fired and sh uh, fired upon and shelled from those buildings here um, if the Russians actually penetrate through the whole citadel we would uh, should be expected that there's a hasty withdrawal so we will have to see how long the citadel can hold out and without the citadel even the defense of those lower areas seems kind of pointless so it seems likely that Bakhmut is about to fall we will have to see if and to what degree the Russians have advanced and maybe if the Ukrainians want to do some counterattacks. But while the Ukrainians right now push forward in the south and in, in the north of the city, in the center, in the city itself, they are about to get crushed and overwhelmed. And in those fighting on a video appeared the proof of an American um, veteran, a former Green Beret, who uh, whose name was Nicholas Maimer he was on a on one video where you see his corpse lying underground he's killed and they got his identification documents so he is um, he has paid the ultimate price to defend Ukraine's sovereignty in against the Russian invasion here and at least from Rigoshin's words, he seems to respect that because he claimed that they're gonna put him into a coffin and drape it with an American flag and hand it over because he, fi he fought like a man and died with honor. Um, that was it for me for now. If you liked the report, despite the grimsome gruesome i think is the word gruesome ending um please hit the like button leave a comment for the algorithm and say what do you think about the fighting what do you think how long bahmut will be able to hold out leave your comment in the comment section that really helps with the algorithm too and if you're new here i would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss future updates on the war in ukraine that's it from me for now this channel is only possible because of the support from viewers like you if you like to support the channel you can do so by the means in the description thank you very much to everyone 
already doing so um, your help is really appreciated but that's it for me for now thank you for your attention thank you for being here and um, i'll be back